Hello and welcome to ProMarks. Today we will talk about the publish subscribe architecture. Let's imagine we have an ice cream application and we are given a task to manage the ordering process. The process will be as follows. We will get a paid for order. We will need to package it. We will need to send the order to the customer and we will need to notify the user with a mail that says that the order is in progress and we are packaging, packaging it now and we are sending it to the customer uh, via the mail and via some uh, smartphone applications for Android or iPhone. So how can we do it? Well, the first solution that we might imagine is as follows. Let's create some services that will do uh, some of the parts of the process. So we have now a packaging service that packages the, uh, the needed ice cream flavors into a package. We have now a delivery service that, that is uh, supposed to deliver this package to the customer. And we have a notification service that notifies the user uh, via some uh, email or uh, smartphone uh, notifications. And we will create an order manager service that will be responsible for orchestrating all this stuff. The ordering flow will go like this. When the ordering manager receives the order, the paid for order, he sends this order to be packaged and uh, built from the ice cream flavors and packaged into a package. Once the package is received back to the ordering manager, when it is packaged, he will send it to be delivered to the customer. The package is delivered to the customer and uh, along all these ways, when he sends it to the uh, packaging, to the ordering, when he receives it, he sends a notification on each and every step of the way. So for example, when he receives the order, he sends a notification or a mail that the order has been received. When the order was Packaged, he sends a notification that the order is packaged and uh, now it's being delivered. Uh, and uh, for example, when the ordering service uh, delivers the package to the customer, he returns a notification to the ordering manager and says that the order is uh, finished and now the ordering manager notifies the user that the uh, order has been finished. Another flow solution might be uh, instead of all of the traffic going through the ordering manager we will have uh, the traffic go as follows. When the order comes the ordering manager sends it to the packaging manager. When the packaging manager finishes he sends it to the uh, to the mailing <coughs> not to the mailing, not to the delivery service and when the delivery service finishes, he sends the, the order status to the ordering manager that will update some uh, general order status. And along the way, when everything, as before, when we do, had uh, things packaged or delivered, uh, a notification will be sent through the notification service. This means that every serv service will send uh, some information to the notification service. Now let's look at some problems with these both approaches. I'll show the problems on the second approach because it is what is drawn here, but the same similar problems uh, you can see in the previous approach that uh, I did. The first problem you can see here is that these services are very coupled. What do I mean by this? It means that if, for example, the notification service changes, okay, it changes its API. All of the services that used it, okay, they are now affected. You need to change, you need to change them, okay? You need to change the way that they send the notification to the notification manager. Another bad thing that you might see here is that it, it is ma much harder to test each and every single component individually. For example, if you want to test the packaging service, you will need to, uh, to mock, to create some uh, mocked services for this service, the packaging service, and for this service, the mailing service. And uh, you will need to check that once you uh, give it an order and it finishes, 
it sends it to the post office service and uh, along the way it sends notifications. Okay, so you will need to create mocks for the services and these services might be some uh, inside process services, for example a class or a function, but they can be really services and other processes that use uh, that this service as a process uses them. So this architecture uh, is both for the for the big services like processes and for the inside memory processes uh, and services like classes and uh, and functions. Okay, so this architecture you can think of as a high level architecture or a lower level architecture within a single process. So. Uh, when I'm talking about tests, uh, mocking the services inside a single process will be actually using real mocks and uh, using uh, architecture as a top level, as a services architecture, you will need to create some dummy services that you might ex uh, that you can expect them, what happens to them when you uh, send them stuff. So you will need to create for this integration test, you will need to uh, spin up this service as a mock and you will need to spin up this service as a mock and connect them together so it is much harder. You have more uh, components to, uh, to build in order to start the, start the test and it is a very simple example and you can imagine how it will uh, be in much larger uh, architectures with many more services. Another problem is what happens if this service goes down? Okay, if this service dies, for example, you need some kind of retry mechanism for this to send stuff here. And same goes for uh, other services. For example, if this service goes down, you will need some kind of retry mechanism, this arrow, that will resend the, uh, the orders over here. Okay, so each and every component, if it, if it dies, you need to, to implement the retry mechanisms in every other service and in every other, other mechanism. Another problem is what happens if you want to add another component to the equation. For example, you want to add a service that measures the time that it takes for an order to be completed. So what you will need to do, you will need to be able to measure when the order starts okay, and when the order is finished. So in this case, uh, the ordering manager will need to send notifications for the order start and finish. And you can uh, think of other stuff you want to measure. For example, the time it takes for the uh, order to be packaged. So another uh, thing that we'll need to change is the packaging manager. You will need to, uh, to send notifications to the service when the uh, package is sent uh, to the post office, to the many, uh, to the in delivery service and when the package is starting to uh, to be packaged and you need to uh, and this monitor service will calculate the time difference and will uh, start monitoring each and every package so what basically just happened this and these services they their code had to be changed in order to add another component so it is not very robust uh, it works okay you can do it it is not so difficult but uh, in a second, I will sh show you an approach that, uh, that eliminates it. And the final thing that I want to mention is, as you can see, there are actually like one, two, three, four, five services in this equation. And you can see from the arrows that go from one service to another that, well, it is kind of complicated. You need to, to, be able to be able to understand what happens here. And it is not a very straightforward solution and you need to know what each arrow does here and well it's complicated now another thing that might get hard here is what happens if you want to scale these things for example what happens if you want to create uh, multiple instances of this packaging manager so if you create for example 10 instances of this and now you send order orders to the services uh, one of the services receives this order and starts to package it now, what happens if you want to cancel this order? You don't really know which service got it. This ordering manager sometimes doesn't really know uh, that there are multiple instances of this because they're probably under some kind of load balancer and 
Now, in order for him to cancel the order, he needs to, I don't really know how to cancel it very efficiently, uh, because uh, he needs to know which service is handling the job uh, right now, and furthermore, what happens if the order has been already packaged and sent to the customer, and now the packaging manager needs to know whether to cancel the job from here or from here. And you can think that there are multiple instances of this service as well. So now he needs to cancel the order here and here, and he doesn't really know uh, where to go. Now, in the previous example, where the arrows well, were going all through this service, he might know it, at what stage the order is, if it is in packaging stage or if it is in a delivery stage. But again, he doesn't know which of these services like, for example, if it is already in delivery, he knows it is in the, in the, in the delivery process. But he, if there are multiple instances of this delivery service, he doesn't know uh, to which of them to send. And he sometimes doesn't even know that there are multiple instances of this service. So again, we have a problem. Now, let's solve all of these problems by introducing a new component. This is a component that all it does, it manages some queues. Okay, and you can publish to these queues and subscribe to the queues. So now let's see how this flow works with this component. When an order, a new order arrives, the ordering manager sends the order to the queue that says these orders in this queue are orders that needs to be packaged. Okay, that's it. Now the packaging manager is subscribed. He's subscribed to this queue and when a new order is inside the orders that need to be packaged queue, he pulls it and starts to work on it. When he packages it, he is putting the packaged order in a queue that says orders that needs to be sent to the customer. Now, to the same queue, this service, the, the post office service, the service that sends to the, the orders to the customers, he is subscribed to that queue and when an order arrives, he pulls it from, the, from that queue he handles it, sends, to, sends it to the customer, and when he is finished, he's setting this uh, into another queue that order has been sent to the customer uh, queue uh, for this order. Now, when uh, the order uh, is entered to that queue, to the uh, finished orders queue, the customer service, not the customer service, the uh, manager, the order manager is subscribed to that queue. And now he gets uh, this item that says the order has been finished and updates all its, uh, all its data. Now, how will we send notifications to the users? We will subscribe to multiple queues. Okay, I will put it like this. I will draw it as multiple subscriptions. Okay, and when uh, the notification service uh, uh, gets an item from each and every queue uh, for the orders that needs to be packaged, orders that has been packaged and need to be sent to the customer, and finished orders. When he gets uh, an item from each and every queue, he sends a notification to the user. These queues can have two groups of subscribers. One group is a, I will call it a copy subscribers. For example, this subscriber and this subscriber, they are both subscribed to the queue that is, it is a queue of items that needs to be uh, packaged. Uh, this means that each of them will get a copy of the same item from the same queue. For example, if this order manager is putting an item in the orders that needs to be packaged queue, single item, it will be copied and sent to every subscriber of this uh, group. Another a group of subscribers can be a single item subscriber. For example, if there are multiple copies of this service and multiple copies of this service, within this group, the, the item will be sent only to one subscriber. So if there are multiple instances of this packaging service and they are all subscribed to the same queue, to the packages, to the orders that needs to be packaged queue, only one instance will get the job. This way, uh, we'll make sure that only uh, one time the ice cream will be packaged and we'll make sure that 
both the packaging service and the notification service will get the order. And the final thing that uh, we will need to connect is the monitoring service. So as the notification service, he will subscribe to multiple queues. Okay, and uh, he will measure the time it takes to, for the order to be uh, received, completed. And for example, he, if he wants to manage uh, and monitor how much time it spends in the packaging process. He can uh, manage and monitor uh, these two arrows. For example, the arrow that says that the order is, uh, is need to, needs to be packaged and uh, an arrow that says the order has been finished packaging. Now let's look of how this architecture solves the issues that we had before. First issue we had before that these services were all coupled and now you can see that all of the services, they don't even know about each other. Okay, the packaging service doesn't know about the ordering service, doesn't know about the notification service, doesn't know about the customer delivery service. He only knows about the, the queue. Okay, so each and every service is coupled with the queue. Yes, that's true. But uh, it doesn't matter how many services there are, they all will be coupled only with this queue. Okay, they will not change if another uh, service will be added as opposed to the example before when we added the monitoring service all we needed to do in this architecture is just subscribe to the appropriate queues and we didn't need to change the services here well we, we might need to change them okay in a, in a way that they will need to send more notifications for example in the, in the case of uh, the packaging manager he will need to send a notification that he starts okay the the packaging process and that he ends but he will need to send it to a service that he already knows so it is much easier to send a new notification instead of integrating a new service with a new api what happens if you want to test a service all we need to do is create a mock for this queue and we don't even need to create a mock we can use the same existing queue that we use in production because what we can do, we can simulate uh, pushing a notification to a queue and subscribing to the queue that we expect the service that we test to send notifications to. For example, if we want to test the packaging service, we will subscribe to the orders that have been pack uh, packaged and needs to be delivered to the customer queue in the test and we will publish notifications to the queue that says orders that needs to be packaged. That's all we need to do and when we do it, the service will run, finish packaging and put it in the relevant queue and we will get a notification. So we didn't even need to create mocks for this test. If one of the services changes, for example, if this service changes, other services don't really need to know about it, okay? They only need to agree on the notification API and the queues API and after they agree on it, Nothing needs to be changed ever when one service is changing. If the notification service or the packaging service changes its behavior, when it is uh, doing the work, uh, it doesn't matter for the other services. Now, what happens when the packaging manager service dies? All that will happen is that the orders that needs to be packaged will pile up in the queue and when the service gets up again, this service will retransmit the items to this service uh, when he subscribes to it. Okay, so there is only one place of implementing the logic of retransmitting the orders. Now, as I said before, uh, adding another comp component will probably not change all of the services uh, and might even not change any of them. For example, if we added the monitoring service, we will need only to subscribe to the relevant queues and that's it. No one of the services will need to change. And the cool thing about scaling with this type of architecture, now we can scale each service individually. And now let's think what will happen here. Uh, for example, what happens if we have multiple instances of the packaging service and we have multiple instances of the delivery service. Okay, and now the ordering manager sends an order. He doesn't really know in which stage the order is right now and where the order instance is actually going to which instance of this or this. So what happens now when we, wants to, when we want to cancel the order? 
all we need to do is send a cancel order to the canceling queue and we will need each and every instance of these services to be subscribed to the queue and each and every instance will receive a notification about canceling the order and the instance will check itself and check whether he has the order. If he doesn't have the order, he will just throw this notification. He will not cancel an order that he doesn't have. And if he does have the order, for example, if the order is now in the delivery process and the instance that delivers the package gets, uh, gets the message of the cancelling, he will cancel the delivery and notify that the uh, order was cancelled. So he doesn't really need to know where the order is, okay, in what, in what stage. And another good thing is, for example, if the order was in a packaging stage and it was cancelled and now the packaging uh, manager says that the order has been cancelled, the notification manager can be subscribed to this queue as well and send a notification to the user that the order has been cancelled. And a final thing that I want to mention, as opposed to the drawing that we had before with multiple errors going from uh, one service to another, now we have a single point that all errors go through it and it is much clearer the architecture. It is dense, but because I drew it, drew it dense, but it is much clearer, okay? Uh, there are no multiple arrows going in many kind of directions. All we have is multiple queues. Each queue represents some kind of topic, orders that needs to be sent, orders that need to be packaged, okay? Uh, cancelled orders or orders that need to be cancelled. And it is a very easy to understand queue topic. And now all the traffic goes through those queues, okay? And it is quite easy to understand and see what happens here. Now, not every good thing that comes, it comes only with good stuff. You can get pretty bad stuff with this architecture as well. Stuff that you need to think about when you're implementing it. For example, what happens if an order was in the middle of packaging, okay? The queue, the item was taken from the queue, and now the service that handled this packaging, he suddenly died, okay? So now we want to be able to, to not uh, to not lose this order. So there are a couple of solutions. For example, this service will persist the state of the order in some kind of database and when he gets up, he will pull the order from this database or the queue will not lose the items that were taken from it in some kind of way and when a service dies and he gets up again, he pulls the same item again and starts working on it. But you will need to the items and the processes to be in a way that uh, running the same process multiple times gives the same result. This logic is called idempotent logic and I will talk about it in the next episode. But for now, all you need to know is this logic means that running the same logic multiple times gives the same result. Another thing that, that it is hard to do, it is not very trivial to do, that was something that I mentioned before, you need to be able to subscribe to the queues with the two types of subscriptions. Subscriptions that uh, copy the item each time the item gets into the queue and subscription that gives only one item to multiple instances. For example, if you have multiple instances of the packaging manager, only one instance should get the order. And a final thing that I want to mention is because this architecture is very simple and everything goes through the queue, it is also a single point of failure of all the system. Okay, if the queue dies and if it gets overloaded with items, all of your application will probably not function. Okay, so this thing in the middle, it should be very resilient to loads and will need to be uh, duplicated multiple times in multiple instances and you will need to manage some kind of queuing for multiple instances and it is not simple you'll probably not implement this thing in the middle by yourself. There are plenty solutions for this thing in the middle. For example, Redis, for example, Kafka, okay, RabbitMQ. All this, they implement this thing in the middle uh, in many ways. Each uh, of the implementation gives something and doesn't give others thing. You need to uh, investigate and check what will do for you, okay? so. 
this component it is a very important component and you need to think very thoroughly about this compo uh, component and how to manage it because it is a single point of failure in your entire system. You have watched an episode about PubSub architecture. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more architecture videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code-related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist.